Tonight we have game one of the Western Conference Finals between the Mavericks and the Warriors. And before I get to that really quick, take a second because we had game one of the Eastern Conference Finals tonight. Miami, or last night I should say, recording this late uh, Tuesday night. We had the Miami Heat beating the Celtics uh, to take game one in Miami uh, in a game where it was kind of like over my prediction before it even started because Al Horford and Marcus Smart were both ruled out basically like an hour, hour and a half before the game. Uh, Al Horford is in the health and safety protocols and Marcus Smart was ruled out with a foot injury. Uh, that obviously changes things drastically for the Celtics. Uh, a lot of Aaron Neesmith minutes, a lot of Peyton Pritchard minutes. Um, I'm sure that was not what he made uh, Yudoka had in mind. So I don't want to say this game doesn't matter because I think the Heat showed a lot of just how much of a, a problem they're going to be for Boston. Um, really what, what did it was the third quarter. So the the first half was pretty, pretty back and forth. The Celtics had like an eight-point lead at halftime. Then that third quarter, they the Miami just put the clamps on, and that was it. It was it was crazy to see. It was, I believe, like thirty nine to fourteen is was the, how they outscored them to swing the game and kind of just break it open. And from there, it was never really in doubt. Like Boston cut it to ten uh, in the fourth quarter, but it was quickly Miami just kind of put a couple put a couple uh, possessions together, and that was that. Um, Jimmy Butler, 41 points, yet again, uh, just unbelievable. He has taken his scoring to a completely different level in the playoffs. And he's always been one of those dudes that you can count on to go to another level with the playoffs. But this performance has been just just another level. I'm a huge Jimmy Butler fan. Uh, so to see this has been just, it's been incredible to watch because the way he's doing it isn't with a lot of relying on the outside shooting. And like, took a lot of free throws uh this game took forever because there were so many free throws um but at least he's like driving in and throwing himself into people and like trying to get contact that way and he's not just like kicking his feet out on jump shots but still and and you know i don't want this game this series to be decided all at the free throw line i think that's that's played out i don't enjoy that at all it's not what i want to watch so hopefully that's not the case for this entire series, but for game one, he really came out and set the tone, and I thought it was a great performance. I mean, he's been highly efficient, which is another thing that has plagued him, especially with outside shooting throughout his career, is, you know, he can be an inefficient volume scorer, and if he keeps playing like this with the contributions they're getting from everyone else, uh, Coach Spolstra said it after the game, too. Uh, P.J. Tucker is someone who is not 100%. Uh, is playing through a lot of different nagging injuries, but he is still like, I believe he, I believe Spo called him the heart and soul of the team. Like as he goes, so they go, and that's you know it's exactly what he brought to Milwaukee, and it's exactly what Milwaukee was missing in that Celtics series. So don't think you can overstate the importance of PJ Tucker and just that entire Heat team's mindset. They just go under the radar, they just do their job, they they win games, they do whatever they have to do to win. And it's just, I think they would prefer to just be under the radar so they can keep doing that. So we'll see what happens with the series. I uh, obviously don't know how long Al Horford will be out. Don't know how long Marcus Smart will be out. Hopefully they can come back and we can see these teams at full strength because it'd really be a bummer. I'm not going to say any like, asterisks or anything, but like, I want to see these teams at full strength. So anyways, uh, Western Conference Finals tonight, Mavericks and Warriors. Uh, game one, this is going to be a crazy series. I said after um, Dallas destroyed the, the Suns, I said I thought that, um, that the Warriors would be happy about this because there's no DeAndre Ayton on the Mavericks that they have to worry about like their size disadvantage. But they also had, you know, found... <laughs> they struck gold with Kevon Looney, who just turned into prime Dennis Rodman in that closeout game against Memphis, grabbing like 22 rebounds, something like that, with only like four points, five points. So if they're getting that type of rim protection and that type of rebounding from him, they're going to be just fine no matter who uh, the Mavericks are putting under center. But the problem with this series is it's going to be basically won or lost depending on how 
they can shut down Luka Doncic because Luka Doncic is a flamethrower of a player right now and he can absolutely carry that team by himself because we just watched him do it. We watched him get unbelievable shooting performances from Maxi Kleber, Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, Dwight Powell, uh, Davis Bertans, like all these dudes that were essentially just kind of like, hey, we need to fill out the roster. Hey, Bertans is a throw in on this Dinwiddie trade. Like, and he's making these dudes, like, he's making these dudes a lot of money. I'll just put it that way. And it's going to be really interesting to see what happens because the Warriors, as far as, like, the backcourt, not the best defense right now. Clay Thompson still definitely looks like he's coming back from two years of devastating lower body leg injuries. So he doesn't have the same lateral movement. Uh, a lot more players blowing by him than before. He doesn't have that, that speed and that burst to cut down and cut off those driving lanes, which is something that Luka is really good at exploiting. He's really good at finding those cutters and just like putting enough English on the ball to get it where it needs to go. And so if, if they don't have anyone that can defend that and that can watch those cuts, it's probably going to be a huge game for Luka facilitating. Uh, on the flip side, Dallas has shown a crazy ability to just like clamp down and just defend the hell out of some of these teams. Like they made life miserable for the Suns in those last few games. So I don't know because Steph Curry, Jordan Poole, Klay Thompson, all of those guys are are well not even like you can't say they're a different breed because you know Devin Booker is a pretty pretty elite scorer in the league. Chris Paul is known for being able to just get to his spots. So Dallas has shown a blueprint to do this. And I'm just saying it's not going to be a shock if this series goes six or seven and if Dallas pulls it out. Like, I'm not going to be surprised. It's just going to mean that, you know, Brunson, Dinwiddie, and Luka all feasted when it came to taking advantage of mismatches on the, on the backcourt. And it's going to mean that those role players were all able to hit those open shots that the guard play is generating for them. Like, that's the entire strategy for the Mavericks is... is drive in, kick out, get those open looks, and hope they go down. Luka does enough on his own that that can be the the second the secondary strategy, and it's fine. And it's fine most of the time. Dallas will just absolutely rain out threes and just hope it works with raining threes and with hard-nosed defense. So I'm really excited to see how well they can implement that, ga implement that game plan because on the flip side, the Warriors, it's all... It's all basically coming down to Draymond Green's facilitating and Andrew Wiggins, if he's showing up and if he can two-way uh, play like he has and like what made him an all-star this year. Because it's probably going to come down to him to guard Luka Doncic. I'm guessing it'll be some uh, committee led by Wiggins and um, Draymond Green. One player I haven't heard anything about either is Andre Iguodala, which... It's not the same Andre Iguodala that was Finals MVP for uh, defending LeBron James and holding him to just like 30, 10, and 5 or something. Um, but like Andre Iguodala is going to be one of those dudes where if he's healthy, if he can play, that's going to be a huge difference because that's one more person that they can throw at Luka. Uh, Steve Kerr said something about potentially Gary Payton could come back at some point this series. Um... I don't know about that. Dude broke his elbow. I would not want to be playing professional basketball with one broken elbow. Uh, but, you know, that's why I'm not in the league. That is the only reason why I'm not in the league, clearly. Um, but I'm just really excited for this for this series in a way that, like, I was excited for Minnesota-Memphis, where it's like the styles make the fights. Like, these are two teams that want to just run, get in space, free-flowing ball movement and they both have different ways of getting there and I don't think Golden State can match the defense that Dallas has shown I don't think they can they can do that so their hope is going to have to be that they can take advantage of mismatches and get open shots because if not it's going to be a long night it's going to be a, a long night it's going to be a long series and I genuinely don't know what will happen um, I'm inclined to say Golden State takes it because they're the older team. They're the veteran, experienced team. They've been there before. They have Klay Thompson back. Game six, Clay was on full display. Like, even as questionable as his defense has been, as bad as his shooting has been in streaks, 
they've all been there before, and, and especially Clay has had some of the most iconic playoff game performances I can remember. So I'm not ready to write off the Warriors yet. I want to say seven games. Um, I'm going to say Warriors in six. I don't feel 100% good about that because I think Luka and Steph are probably on equal footing for best player in the series. So don't feel super good about um, that. I think Dallas is going to put up a hell of a fight. And I would not be shocked if they win game one. I think the after one game, we're going to see a lot about how these teams are going to match up, what's going to happen. Uh, something I looked up that doesn't really mean a lot because it's the regular season. I said this the other day about uh, Boston-Miami, but Dallas has won five out of the last six regular season games against the Warriors over the last two years, which that's one thing because, you know, a lot of the injuries for the Warriors, they had Draymond in and out of the lineup, Steph in and out of the lineup, Clay obviously didn't come back until January of this season, but Dallas is one of those teams that they just... I feel like people don't realize how bad of a matchup they are for certain teams until they're on TV winning by 30 or 40 in a close-out playoff game. So I'm going to be really interested to see if the Warriors uh, can weather whatever storms uh, Dallas is going to throw at them. I think it's going to be one of those series where the home court is going to be absolutely insane. So I'm going to say Warriors in six. I did my heart believe it's probably going to go seven, but if it goes seven... I am kind of leaning Mavericks on that one. So in the interest of not waffling back and forth, I'm going to be, I'm going to just say Warriors in six. We'll see what happens, but I cannot wait to watch this game. Uh, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, uh, whether it's, you know, thoughts on the Eastern Conference Finals, the first game, or predictions for this series. Uh, let me know, please. Uh, thank you very much for watching and enjoy the game tonight.